So back to uh, page with some PowerPoint stuff. Here we go. So rack and data center capacity planning and reporting. So I'm going to talk about just sort of different report types within net terrain. Uh, this is not necessarily all encompassing of all the report options that you have. I'll talk about sort of the report types that we do offer in net terrain and some of the things you can do uh, from that standpoint. I just show you some examples. This isn't going to be a super long um, presentation or anything. If you want more information or details, just uh, reach out uh, to myself. My email's down there, but probably better off with talking with uh, Fred. He's down at the bottom here. Fred, sales honcho. Um, he, he's good to reach out to just sort of as that first tier of, you know, question answer type stuff. Cause usually you're going to ask questions around, of course, pricing if you're not a customer. Um, so that's always important to know too. Uh, in addition to sort of knowing about the tool, um, sort of some of the things you can do, if you don't want to try out the software, you can give us a shout or you can uh, go to terrain.com. And uh, on this site, you can actually sign up for a trial account, uh, email address, um, start my free trial. You don't need to put any kind of payment or anything. And it's a 14 day trial. So I wouldn't start it unless you actually have time to play around. I would also reach out to us if you do plan on doing a trial, if, just in case you have questions or if you want to spend, you know, 15 or 30 minutes with us, kind of getting you started. A little hand holding, never a bad thing, although there is documentation. When you do log in, there's a, uh, under the help section of NetTerrain, you can go find the, the, the user guide, which is the primary user guide. There's other user guides, but that's the primary to really kind of get started. It's about 400 pages. So there's plenty of stuff to read. Uh, anyway, capacity, data center capacity planning. So I'm Jason, I'm with uh, Graphical Networks. This is what I do, support sales engineer, sort of a lot of uh, customer, you know, communication front on the front side. If you're looking at the software, answering technical questions, um, helping out with uh, that kind of stuff. And then on the back side, if you're a customer helping with uh, problems, issues, uh, help you get started, training, support, all that stuff. So manage racks, optimize and plan capacity reports, etc. So I think there's a polling question. I don't know how many we got today, but I'm going to fire up. Well, so we have three polling questions today. So if you guys don't mind, I'm going to launch this poll. How do you manage your data center rack capacity today? You can choose more than one, apparently. So spreadsheets, Visio, open source, it's all in my head. <laughs> that's, that's usually the big one, which is sometimes the problem, uh, especially if you're the one that's going to be leaving soon. The company. Although maybe it's not a problem for you. So <laughs> sorry about my phone making noise there. Um, so anyway, give you a minute to sort of check that out. Uh, so it looks like uh, spreadsheets, which is typical, Visio, number two, got other, I wonder what other is. And then in my head, <laughs> got a few, a few people within my head. So that's cool. Well, I'll end that poll. Um, oh, polling question number two, might as well get these polling questions out of the way. Are you adopting a hybrid IT infrastructure? So are you guys moving more into the cloud? Do you do both right now? It looks like a yes. So hybrid type environment. I'd say most people are probably hybrid. I have run across a few folks that are still very much not in the cloud. Um, just heavy VM, you know, lots of virtualization, but not necessarily in the cloud, so to speak. So it looks like the majority of you folks are doing some sort of hybrid model right now. By the way, again, if you can't hear me or there's an issue or a problem, just to hit the, uh, I think it's a QA button, you can ask questions. Or if you just wanna ask questions along the way, feel free. Uh, yeah, that's uh, seems to be right. Lots of uh, hybrid infrastructure now. And I got one third question. Uh, so the other question has to do with actually cloud infrastructure. Um, so if you are using the cloud, um, 
and you you're currently doing sort of a hybrid where you have your own racks and things like that but what about the cloud are you documenting the cloud infrastructure do you need to do you want to i think it's the big question you know like me i've got amazon i well i've got amazon and azure and a little bit of google not much but um you know for me i document oh i'm supposed to launch the poll sorry there you go um, so for me, I document the AWS infrastructure we have because that's primary and then some of the Azure as well. Um, that's not as, not as big, but we have a nice, um, just a side note. That's not, this is about, but we have this, uh, discovery tool called the collector. So it does SNMP discovery, but it has a plugin for Azure and for AWS. You should check that out if you are so inclined. And that can pull back your environment from like AWS and show you all the connections between all the like EC2 instances, your um, EBSs, your uh, the IP addresses they're assigned, firewalls, sort of the whole gambit. So anyway, thanks for taking the poll. Uh, it's always helpful information. So if you have questions, just you know, again, just raise your hand or go and put some in the QA section there. So. Um, in that terrain, uh, if you haven't really seen our tool, we're a hierarchical tool. So you can start like at a high level, like top level and work your way down into, you know, physical uh, locations and that sort of thing. Um, but then, you know, if you're doing like racks, data centers or wiring closets and rooms and, and that, that type of thing, and then um, you, uh, you know, probably going to show something like a data center where you've got lots of cabinets and equipment and uh, and so on. And part of the things that go along with this is uh, capacity planning. So in this this data center, you see a bunch of cabinets in their different colors and it's sort of a different, you know, a layout of uh, information. And I've got another, uh, another data center actually here uh, stretched out a little bit, a little bit different setup. Uh, same kind of thing. You got different colors. These are the cabinets, the rack, the rectangles are basically the cabinets when you're looking at these things. Um, and because uh, for us, we, we, our rack elevation is when you double click on the cabinet, then you see equipment in the cabinet. We typically show a overview of the whole uh, of the cabinets like this, where you're sort of looking down over top of the cabinets themselves. So that's, uh, that's why you kind of see this view. But one of the things we can do uh, in these views is you can see, for instance, these different cabinets, different colors. Um, and these are overrides, we call them visual overrides. So in this case, this is an override based on, um, on the left-hand side of my screen. If you look at it, it says settings and it says rack overrides, rack by RU, rack utilization, by power, by weight. So the colors will change based on, you know, the, um, in this case, rack utilization or by power or weight. So if I actually click on a cabinet on the left-hand side, you'll see information about the cabinet. Like it's got 10,000 watts of power. It's consuming more than 10,000 watts of power right now based on the equipment inside of it. The max weight is a thousand pounds and I've got 897.2 pounds of weight inside the cabinet. All those things are user definable and can be over overridden. Also, these are calculated. So as you put equipment into the rack, those numbers change automatically. In this case, this is a 42U rack. It says there's one rack unit available. Uh, so that's why it's basically red. Because for us, we have different colors. You know, green is basically an empty cabinet or near empty cabinet. So this may have one two devices, you know, a couple rack units consumed if it's green. Yellow usually means it's somewhere around the 60 to 80% mark as far as uh, utilization. Um, and then uh, on the other side of that would be you know, a percentage of, you know, great, I think it's greater than 80 or 90, then you get into the red range. You can actually change those sort of values. So from a capacity standpoint, you know, you look at cabinets and you go, okay, well, as a whole, I can see which cabinets are free. So if somebody says, hey, we got a new project, you got to install all this new hardware, where are you going to put it? Well, of course, I might go into one of these cabinets that are yellow. Uh, there's a possibility that I've got some rack space left there. But um, 
you know, 24 rack units, or it might be in this case, one rack unit. Obviously the ones that are red are pretty much, well, probably not gonna fit much stuff in those, um, especially if you're doing primarily the front, the front elevation. This is a elevation where I'm showing front and back, but most of my equipment's really on the front side, but I can zoom on the back side as well, just to show that I can't put anything in there. Uh, but the point is when you, you know, you look at these, uh, one of these rack elevations, um, it's doing these calculations for you automatically doing the, the system being the, what's doing the, the calculations. So the, um, you know, looking at this as a whole, again, you get back to um, the uh, rack utilization uh, as a whole. So from a capacity planning standpoint, what I'm getting at is visually, you can see right away, you know, where I have the best chance of putting equipment, of course, is in a green cabinet as far as rack utilization go. Now, I could switch this to, so instead of viewing this color-wise by racks, I could do it by power. Um, you'll see this is pretty much all red because it's the way I set this up and a lot of them are green. So most of these are pretty much at the threshold for power. So from that standpoint, you may look at a, you may look at a cabinet and go, well, it has space, but I don't really have power left to feed it. So it takes out all those cabinets and then I'm back to really the green ones, the ones in this case that have no equipment in them. Because even the ones that were yellow that might have had space in them, they don't have power. So that's no good. And then, it, you know, it could be, uh, there could be weight issues too, but I think that's, I mean, I don't hear too many people worrying about weight in cabinets. I think cabinets hold quite a bit of weight, unless you're in an environment where it's in a building where you do have a threshold for power for weight, right? You might be on a third floor or some floor where it's not reinforced. And it's like, well, you can't go exceed, you know, this, this much, uh, this weight, or you may have a problem with it falling through the floor. So, so you could switch these things. So visually you can set it up where you see these things very easily, you know, rack utilization, power and weight. And again, those things are calculated based on the equipment inside the cabinet. So, if I'm looking at a cabinet and I'm looking at a device here, then when I click on the device, the device itself on the left-hand side will have some sort of power and weight associated with it. So in this case, this one's 950 watts and it's 25.75 uh, pounds. Again, these are values that are part of the object. They're really in the catalog. So I'm going to drag the object out. It's already got that sort of pre pre-configured or predefined that power number. Um, and that's true of weight as well. But those are things you as a user can override or change because you may find that the power draw isn't what the manufacturer spec was. Maybe it's higher, maybe it's lower, maybe you added some cards or something else where you need to account for that. Um, same with weight. So those are things you can change, which is always a good thing. You have that flexibility uh, to make those changes. Um, there are certainly um, reports you can run too about your cabinets. I have a few of these that I've sort of run. Um, let me go back. So in that terrain in the upper right corner, there's this button here called reports. And that allows you to, to go in and actually see um, different reports. They're, they're sort of reports that are based around um, uh, sort of, uh, you know, tables, uh, not tables, sorry. Uh, bar charts, pie charts, they're more visual uh, from that standpoint. Uh, so when you go and look at something like this, you get a report of all the various information. Uh, and it's pulling that all from the net terrain system and doing these calculations and giving you information about kind of where you're at on certain things. But one of those things might be where you're looking at um, the number of racks at different in different locations of your environment. Uh, top five rooms with rack utilization. You know, I'm at 95.45% for this particular room and the wiring closet and so on. So you have these reports, you have these calculations. Um, a lot of times you can double click and generate a report further from there. This one is actually just showing you kind of details about it. But um, if we're looking at something like uh, power devices or racks or whatever it happens to be, um, you can usually double click and have the system generate a table report. So you have kind of two different types of reports, table type reports, which you can of course export, 
or again, more of the by par bar charts and pie chart type reports. I sort of call them the manager reports, right? And then the user reports. Um, so one of the things in the system is this, this reporting sort of console, what we call the dashboard reporting engine, which allows you to have, you know, interact and understands the data, right? Some of the BI stuff that are there. Now you could also build your own reports if you want to within that tool. There's a dashboard reporting engine that you can get access to on your NetTerrain server, and you can generate your own reports and set up reports and uh, do that kind of thing. Um, that, if you want to do those types of things yourself, we have a lot of built-in predefined reports, but you can also, uh, if you're a customer, you can request reports from us as well, table reports or uh, especially one of those things that we you know, focus on for customers where uh, it's one of those things usually after you've used the tool for a bit, then you get a feel for what reports you want out of the system. Unless you already, unless you already have a system where you have certain reports that you run on a regular basis and you know what you're going to want, that's fine. You can always request those, but these, uh, these reports, these dashboard type reports and, or the uh, table type reports are things you can create yourself or again, we'll create them uh, table reports is if you're a customer, um, you just open, you know, you talk with us about what you need and then we kind of go out and work on that with you. Um, the other tool, another tool within the system itself from the standpoint of, you know, getting data out of the system, because really when you're talking about capacity planning, you're really talking about getting data out of the system to help you understand what you have. And what that is really depends on what it is you're trying to do. Uh, in the system. So we have also this uh, cre create query tool, which allows you to go in and generate sort of table reports as well. Um, when you are uh, looking at, you know, things like cabinets or devices in the system, there's other ways you can get sort of meaningful information um, and that's automatically sort of available or updated. And those are what we call expressions. And uh, just like an example of something like that, I'm gonna double click here. And in the bottom left quarter, you have these statistics like devices, total ports, connected ports, free ports, and so on for this particular cabinet. It's giving you sort of a mini report of information about this particular rack. Uh, because when you talk about capacity planning, it could be many different things, not just rack utilization. Again, it could be something like power or weight, but it also might be the devices themselves. It might be continuous rack units, right? I need a report that shows tells me continuous rack units for every cabinet. So I can go in and make a determination if I'm buying a five, five U device, which cabinets will it really fit in? Because just because the system shows you visually that I've got free space, it doesn't mean I have continuous free space, which means one of two things. I can't put it in that cabinet, or if I'm gonna put it in the cabinet, then I might have to do some work beforehand, right? I'm gonna to have to move objects around in that rack, which is very easy to do in net terrain, but in the real world, right, that's work. Uh, because you may have cables that are too short and then you have to change cables out. And, you know, you probably all experienced that at one time or another. But we do have these uh, counters we call expressions and these things are always up to date. So as if you were to add an equipment here, this would automatically update with the information. If I take ports away, that would update as well. So the point of really sort of all of this uh, with respect to net terrain is you have the ability in our tool to use the dashboard reporting engine, the query tool or request reports. And again, there's all different types of reports to choose from. But what it all leads to is answering questions about your system. Again, giving you sort of the intelligence you need to make certain decisions like, again, rack utilization. Where, where are things going to go? Do I have ports freely available in this particular room, wiring closet, data center, et cetera, for maybe some project? Um, in addition to all those things, you also get into, um, you know, the ability to determine if you have... Uh, you know, this is this was more focused on, I think, more cabinet type things, but we do also have the ability to go in and create pathways for circuits. So cables have capacity. Um, for instance, you may have, uh, you know, 
conduits between floors in your building, and I know it's a little hard to see on the left-hand side of my screen, but you have cable capacity and fill capacity. So if you're going to put more cables in between floors, you need to know if you have capacity in your conduits. Because if you don't, again, you have a, you have a bigger, bigger issue to take care of because you can't just like uh, drill a hole in the floor. I assume there's some process you have to follow and go through. So it's not, it's not always that uh, sort of simple. Uh, there's a few questions in here. So I'm going to get back to those in a second. So anyway, um, so in, in net terrain, you can, you know, raculization, capacity, power, data, you know, all those things, but also down to the level of port utilizations, uh, port availability, cable capacity, cable availability, um, all those things, uh, when you have data in the system, you should be able to answer questions you have around those different types of, of questions that might come up. So. Uh, so if you guys have questions, let me know. I'm going to go hit up some questions now. I'm going to just, I guess, stop my share. I don't know how this is supposed to work. So um, so data center floor maps, what format do you need to import floor plans? What if you don't have any data center floor maps? Yeah. So um, if you're building a data center net terrain, you can use a floor plan. We would um, normally any image you're going to use, whether it's a background or a picture or something for some catalog object, it's got to be something a browser, browser understands natively. So JPEGs, uh, PNG, SVG. PNG and SVG is what I use typically the most. Now, if you didn't have a floor plan, you couldn't get it, whatever. Um, you can always just use, we have a grid. So you could turn a grid on and actually just use the grid uh, for a diagram and just place your racks using that grid sort of layout. So... Catalog, how big is the catalog? Catalog is pretty big. I mean, it's, uh, I don't know, 10, 15,000 objects. I can't, I don't even keep track anymore. Uh, for devices, that includes, you know, devices and cards. What's nice though is, you know, people ask me about catalog, worried about not having objects, which I understand, but you have the ability to create your own objects in the terrain, so your own devices. But in addition, if you're a customer, you can request them from us. You can just say, hey, I'm, I need this new Cisco widget that came out. It's not in my catalog. Can we, can we get that from you? Uh, sure. We just, uh, you open a Zendesk ticket, and then we update it and send it to you. Um, pretty easy to do. In fact, I, I have a lot of customers that just request devices from us. They don't, they don't want to create their own, which I fully understand. We also make it in the catalog. It's easy to like duplicate an existing device type because you'll find a lot of devices, right? They increment the version, like it's version B, but it looks identical to the original object. So you really just have to go in there. We do what's called clone, clone the device, change the name. Then you have a new one. It's pretty cool. Um, so that's the catalog. See, can we see multiple cabinets in a row? Uh, you actually can, uh, there's a feature uh, where you can do what we call composite view, where you select multiple cabinets and then it shows those cabinets in a one view. So if you had like five data, five racks in a data center and they were in, maybe they're in different parts of the data center too, you could select them and then do this composite view. So it's pretty cool. It's actually a new feature for version nine, which is coming out end of the year, which is coming up soon. Uh, dashboard reports, can we generate or create our own reports? Yes. So the dashboard reporting engine is part of the terrain. It's not an additional charge or anything. It's just there. So you can um, definitely create your own. In fact, we have a guide, a couple hundred pages or something about the dashboard reporting engine. You can take a class. We offer a two-day class for dashboard reports uh, and so on. I usually, it's one of those things that I think you're better served understanding and creating your own reports after you use net terrain for a little while. Uh, Cause then you know kind of what you want and how you want it and formats and other things. Uh, so that's always a good thing. Uh, how can you import data? So in net terrain, uh, all the sort of diagrams I was showing you like the cabinet elevations and the hierarchy and the buildings and the floors, all of that can come from different data sources. Uh, Excel import, that's one I use quite a bit. Uh, there's a format you follow and it's really easy to use. Uh, you can, in fact, you can update your, your existing objects with Excel or create new, you know, that sort of thing. Um, 
you can also do data import from the standpoint of like discovery. So you can use our collector tool to go out and do an SNMP discovery or use uh, one of our connectors where you're connecting to AWS or Azure or something like that, where it pulls data from those systems. Solar winds, that's a big one. Um, so for, from a network monitoring standpoint, in fact, if you guys have really kind of any system, if it's pretty modern system has APIs available, we can usually connect to it and pull data from it and, and so on. So nothing too hard. So anyway, we're out of time here. If there's no other questions, uh, no worries. But uh, if you guys have more questions, please uh, ping us, graphicalnetworks.com, netrain.com, if you want to sign up for a test account or just call us. We can see if we're the right fit. We'll make sure our product is what you want or want to use. So thanks guys for your time. Really appreciate it. Take care.